Hey, this is Michael from Munchkin Scout, and we're here to talk about the drafting commons and uncommons for Munchkin CCG. So a common theory in drafting formulas is that you're going to see the commons and uncommons more often than rares and extra rares, and we burned most of these. So know what commons and uncommons are good to draft and what ones aren't and you're more likely to have a lot more flexibility when building that 30 card set. Uh, I released a video uh, earlier last week of how the Munchkin CCG draft works, so check that video out if you have more questions about how to draft, but let's go ahead and get into the best commons and uncommons of each of the classes. So we'll start with the Ranger commons. These are the ones you're going to see most often. Uh, the commons are going to be the first cards you're going to see in those packs. So the first one I really like is the Ooh Shiny one. Uh, it's cost one. It's a mischief. It is unzap your hero and recycle one. Recycle one is you may draw one card. If you do, move one card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. Now, the recycle one is a May ability. You don't have to do it. You could just pay one to unzap your hero. And whether you're unzapping the goldfish to take a card from your discard pile to the bottom of your library, or if you're unzapping, in this case, it would be the ranger, who would be basically regenerating a creature or a monster that you hired. Um, if you just want to do that, that's fine. So I feel like this is a good flexible card, and it's also card draw, and also discarding cards you don't need are is a really good uh, flexible thing you could do in a draft. Next one is biodegradable armor. For one, uh, loot armor, you get to zap it and prevent up to three damage to your hero and then squish this, play this as an interrupt. So I feel like this is super flexible and even just for one, even though it's a one-time use, it could be used to save you uh, from a surprise attack or <clears throat> even just preventing any like instant damage is good. And so having this in your Having this in your draft and picking it early will help you uh, kind of get set up for a more defensive deck. Um, there's also a lot of other cards from other classes that help you find loot or get loot back. And so you want to be able to have this as a good recurring effect too. Uh, the last common I think that's really top is the Salvage Salamander. And this is a four month four cost monster with four power and four health. Uh, when this deals damage to a hero in a fight, recycle one. So you may draw one card. Uh, and if you do, you move one card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. Now, once again, it's a May ability. You don't have to recycle one if you choose not to, but it is a May ability. Um, I also think that a four for four four is very powerful and that it is unexpected as well because there are other kind of four cost creatures that do less power so people may not block it as much so and just to note these are not ranked from like three two and one these are just what i think are the three best comments to kind of keep your eye out for i tried to mix up the types of things difference between types of mischiefs and type of loot and types of monsters so that you can keep your eyes open to what other people draft Let's move on to the Ranger Uncommon. So the first one we're going to look at is Tracking. It's a Mischief Trust Tree. Uh, we get to look through your deck and choose a monster card, reveal it, and move it into your hand, shuffle your deck. Uh, this is basically an extra copy of a really powerful creature that you drafted. Um, if you have a cre if you have a bunch of different creatures and you know one that's really good for this next situation or really good against a certain against your opponent, then you can draw that card. Pay one and find that card and put it in your hand right away. Now, they may know about it, but um, unless they have a discard spell um, or a you know, discard a card at random spell, it's not going to really be a problem. Uh, Stumpy is an ally uh, who says, when this is squished, remove it from the game, choose one card from your discard pile, and stash that card. So the ranger likes to get stuff from the discard pile back to the stash and you to keep regenerating those cards um now this is just choose one card it doesn't have to be an ally it doesn't have to be a monster it can be a mischief it can be a loot it can be anything and even in a draft format you're gonna have mixed colors 
more than likely. And so you can find very powerful things that have gone into your graveyard, even things like draw spells or um, things that have control your opponent. So I feel like this is a really good, very good flexible card for any deck. Uh, the last one of the uncommons I just want to highlight is the Timber card. Now, cost three, it's Mischief. Deal two damage to each monster in target opponent's deck. Um, a lot of people will find this kind of unexpected, and so this will just be a good card to pick up to kind of get rid of a lot of monsters that they thought were safe, um, especially if there's like just a little bit of damage on them. Two damage, I think, would be right over the edge of kill, uh, squishing a lot of those creatures. So... That is the Ranger class. Moving on to the Bard. Here's the commons in those. So Elvish Impersonator. Um, pay three, deal three damage to target monster. And also has Monstrous three. So that means this, when this is committed to a fight, it's uh, three cost, three power, three health monster card. Its card type changes to monster and has no other abilities. Now, I repeat this a lot during this video. Flexibility is key in a draft especially drafting in that first pack you want to be able to lean in any direction that people are passing cards to you so this either pay three do three damage to a monster or pay three and have a three three power three health monster card is just good flexibility so it's a it's a burn spell when you need to be a burn spell it's a monster when you need to be a monster just good flexibility 99 bottles uh it's a one cost mischief that you get to draw a card and then discard a card and then has the ability encore which means instead of discarding it you stash it so i think this is really powerful first off you have cards that care about the stash about the number of cards you have in the stash um you also also just this being a reoccurring draw spell even though you do have to discard a card typically you're willing to draw a card and if you don't need that card right now you just put it in the bottom and if you do this enough especially late game you're going to see the, all of those cards again you're not getting rid of it so i feel like this is a good powerful uh card just for card draw and getting the cards that you need uh the last common that i just want to highlight is tromboned which is a two mischief curse it's our first curse we're looking at stick this to a target hero that hero takes one damage when that hero card is zapped so in a draft, typically, you're going to be playing the Goldfish, um, but if you have an opponent who even is playing anything else, like any of the other classes, they can. this helps them double think about what they're going to be doing with their hero. So they can tap it, but they will be paying for that. So Now let's look at those uncommons from the Bard. Uh, I want it all. Basically, uh, it's 99 bottles, but upgraded. So instead of paying one to draw one discard one you pay two to draw two and same thing with the encore so just i think it's a better version of it but it is an uncommon so you're going to see it less often but if you do see it i would highly recommend you grabbing that groupie is one uh so this is a card that's more designed for the bard constructed deck because it is defender draws a card and there are curses and there is a curse that uh the opponent takes the damage every time they draw a card, and if you find one of those that's in a rare spot, uh, take it. It's a very good mechanic. And But I also think a one, one cost for a two power, three toughness is a very hard card to deal with. And so even for letting your opponent draw a card, I don't think that is going to be a big issue. I think that's a nice trade-off especially in a limited format, for them to be dealing with two power and three toughness. And then the last one is YOLO, which for one cost is squish target hired monster, then roll the die, you take this, you take damage equal to the amount shown on the die. So it's high risk high reward, you pay one, you may only take as little as zero as one damage, as much as six. And so it but it is guaranteed removal so they could have something like the art god out which is a seven cost seven seven um or they could have a platinum dragon which is an eight cost eight eight um and so if you're willing to take that risk i think this is a really big this is a good exchange so those are all the barred commons and uncommons i think are the best that you should be drafting all right, next up is the Thief. So let's talk about Thief. So the first one in the commons is the Honest Owls Casino. It's a location. So during your hero, each hero's upkeep, that hero rolls the die. 
uh, if you land on one, each hero spills one. Uh, two to five, all heroes take one gold. And six, all heroes draw one card. I think this is a good symmetrical effect. People are willing to let this one, let this location stay. Um, and you can build more around this once you know you have this in your deck. I think this is just a very powerful location that it may also help your opponent, but you know that it's in the deck and you know it's there, so you can play more around it. Am's great. For two, it's a mischief. Play when checking for cheating. Reduce the... Reduce the power of target monster to zero for this fight. So it's a very powerful card to just instantly, if you're dealing with something that's very, very, very high in power and you weren't expecting it, just pay two and it instantly becomes a zero power creature. Um, and even if it's a high power creature with low toughness, if you blocked it, your stuff can live and that opponent's stuff can die or be squished. And Skewer, I believe, is one of the more powerful commons in the Thief deck, where it is another curse where it deals damage to a target opponent and then stick this to the hero and then bleeding one, which does one damage during that hero's reckoning step. So pay three to do one damage and then do one damage every single time. Uh, and that it is their reckoning step. So. I think it's a very good value card. You're going to be getting a lot more damage if you get this um, by the time you get to level three or by the time you have three gold and it stays on there throughout the game. Um, I believe this is a super powerful card. Yeah. Let's move to the uncommons. Repeat offender. When you commit this to a fight, roll the die. It's one through three is the die has no effect. Four, five, or six, unzap this. This is still committed to the fight. So the situation would be your opponent lays down a creature, asks if you would like to defend it. You put out repeat offender, you zap it, and then you roll the dice. If you hit a four, five, or six, you get to unzap it. It's still committed, but it is a two cost for toughness. So it can be a very reliable repeat defender. Um, or if it only defends one, more than likely it's going to live because... Um, a lot of creatures, uh, you'll be able to tell for a lot of creatures, if they're not cheating, that they can, it'll be very low toughness creatures. So, um, up my sleeve, for one, it's a mischief that you get to look through your deck and choose a trinket card, reveal it, move it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So, if you're drafting a lot of trinkets, or even just if you only have a couple trinkets that are really powerful, this is a good one for just grabbing those trinkets. Um, as soon as you just have a gold and you have this in your hand, it's just another copy of that card. So. Um, and then Salt Elemental for Uncommon. Um, it's a Monster Elemental. If a defender committed a weapon, this gains 5 power for this fight. So um, I feel like this is a really good exchange. It does have 0 toughness, but 0 power, but it ha with the 4 toughness, it's going to live through a lot of weapons that are going to be committed if you're only paying 3. Um, and your opponent more than likely is going to have weapons. Of course, make that judgment when you play this card, but I just feel like this is one of the better creatures in the uncommon slot that is good to grab early. So those are the thief cards. Let's move on to warrior commons. Uh, let's do spin kick, which is a four cost mischief that deals four damage divided any way you choose between target hired monster and its controller. So... If they have a one toughness hired monster, you can do one damage to that monster and then three damage to them. And, or two and two, three and one, or even all four damage, or even all four damage in the other way. So um, they do have to have a hired monster in play because it does have to have a target, but um, you are able to do, you can even say zero zero damage to the monster and four damage to your opponent. That is legal. And so I feel like four for four and even just having the ability to control in either direction is a very powerful effect. Uh, Hydra Axe for two um, is a zero one loot. Uh, when you gain a level, collect one. 
and then gains one power for each token on it. So gaining gaining a level is a normal mechanic of the game, and it's very easy for this to kind of get out of control, especially if you can get it down by by the time that you're a level two, which is towards the beginning of the game. So very easy to do. Uh, Crush and eight. Uh, for one, a mischief, uh, you get to play this during a fight, and target weapon or monster gains two power for this fight. So I just think this is a really interesting pump spell for either your weapon on a defense or your monster on an offense. And so, once again, flexibility is a key for drafting cards early and being able to kind of build your deck how, whichever direction feels best on depending on what cards you get. So let's look at those uncommons. Uh, Peñata for one, it's an ally for that has two health, and if this is squished by a monster in a fight, squish that monster. So it instantly squishes the other monster. It's not difficult, especially if they're paying high. You can easily just throw a Peñata, and it squishes that monster. So um, all the blades for one. Uh, Mischief, look through your deck and choose a weapon card, uh, reveal it, move it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. So very easily a, another card that is a replacement card, or a, just another copy of a weapon card in your deck that's very powerful. Um, they may know what it is, but you're okay with that because you want them to know what threats you. You might want to just show like, okay, I have a threat, now you need to think about what you need to do. So I just think it's a super powerful card. Uh, the last one of the uncommons is Rear Deflection. For a two loot armor, uh, use this when a monster deals damage to you. You can zap it, prevent one damage to your hero, and deal one damage to that monster. Plays an interrupt. So you can easily just prevent one of those. You're not only preventing a damage and letting it fizzle, but you're also dealing an extra damage to that monster. So um, I just think it's very good and a good way of dealing, preventing damage towards you and also dealing damage towards that monster. So, all right, moving on to the wizard commons. Let's go with first the magic missile, a two cost loot weapon for two power and zero toughness. When this, when this damages a monster in a fight, it also deals two damage to that attacker. So if it does any damage, it doesn't have to squish it, it just has to do damage. It deals two damage to it, the attacker, which is a very nice effect to have, and it's almost unavoidable. Uh, Zorch, for one in a mischief, deal two damage to target ally or monster, just very straightforward burn spell that um, can easily squish them, squish an ally or monster, or can... Um, either squish an ally or monster on the defensive side or a monster on the offensive side. So, and Bezelbop for two. Um, it is when this is hired, you may take one damage if you take two gold. So the situation is you pay for Bezelbop for two, you flip it over, and then you take a damage, and then you get your two gold back. And so it's basically a free spell for one damage. So for one damage, you get a one power, one toughness creature. And I believe that's a powerful effect. The wizard, uh, the wizard wants to be taking damage, um, and there's other cards that can also transfer damage from one hero to another. Um, there's a lot of different kind of heal cards if you're mixing cards in your draft. So uh, those are the commons. Those are the most powerful. Uh, wizard uncommons. We're gonna look at uh, Toll Dragon for a four. You get a six toughness, six power, and four toughness creature. Uh, when checking for cheating, the defender may pay any amount of gold to the stockpile. For each gold, it reduces the power of the monster by two. So this is, it is giving some control to the defender, but the gold that they spend, they're not going to get back until the next end step of their turn. So if they're spending some gold, they're... At the most, they're going to spend three, which um, even just spending one is putting them at a disadvantage. Um, if they spend nothing, you just paid four gold to get a six powers across the board. And so that's a super powerful effect and pressure to put on your opponent. Uh, Portal Combat for one in a mischief, for one mischief. Play this one, checking for cheating. Reduce the gold cost of a committed monster by one. 
and then you can give blood one, which is when you play this, you may t also take one damage to activate this ability, reduce the gold of this by one. So uh, basically you can play this for zero gold and you would just be taking one damage, which in situations where you're running low on gold and you need that extra little bit of damage across, um, reducing the gold cost of a committed monster by one could be very effective. And so just that flexibility there. And coin elemental, uh, it's a three cost for a three power for toughness creature that says flip this card like a coin from a height of less than one meter above the ground area. Um, if it lands face up, do one damage to any target. If it lands face down, take one damage. Um, now the monster is still committed. It's still a it is still uh, hired. The effect still works pretty well. And to simply take one damage for a three power or four toughness creature, I believe is a good exchange. So those are the wizard cards to look out for. All right, moving on to cleric commons, uh, we have cheaters never win, which is a mischief card that play when a hero is caught cheating that hero takes two damage um it's a very powerful card and as you can see here the cleric is in the thief and the thieves are the ones who like to cheat the most and so um this game wants you to be cheating and so anytime you can punish your opponent for cheating uh, is a good sign so i think this is just a solid card to pick up in the commons uh picks me succophant uh which is a pay two for a one power three toughness uh, and it has liposuction, um, which is just when this deals damage, you heal an equal amount. So it is just a nice cheap creature to gain some life. Uh, and then you can also combine this with some pump spells from some of the other classes and gain some more life because it is how much damage um, it deals. Not to, It doesn't have to be damage to player. It doesn't have to be damage to specifically a monster or an ally or a weapon but it deals damage it just as long as when this deals damage so which is just a good flexible mechanic okay and also uh smite unseen which is two for a mischief uh play this when a fight has been declared move the attacker's committed card to its owner's discard pile then move all committed gold to the attacker's purse so you play this before you declare defender. So they declare their monster, they put the goal down, and then they ask, do you want to defend? And then you play Smite Unseen, it goes in the discard pile. It's going to be devastating because this is a very highly unexpected card to come across. So, and especially in the common slot, you'll be probably seeing this one quite a bit. So let's look at the uncommons. So we have Avenging Apostle. Uh, when you take damage from monster, unzap this, and it is a two cost for a three toughness, so it's pretty uh, big guy to be defending, and when you take damage, unzap this, so you could be taking a small amount of damage um, to be for this to unzap so that it can defend again, so it just keeps defending you over and over again, and returning, uh, returning benefits are always an advantage to have in a limited format. Um, one for Nun Slap, which is a mischief, uh, interrupt. So you can play this when a monster is hired. Ignore the ability of the hired monster for this fight. So this can be devastating for something like, um, RN Jesus, where the ability is to roll the die and, or any other ability that, or you can either do it, uh, defensively. To where you're, you know, say you're not going to roll a dice for RNGs, you play this, and it's a zero toughness creature that they just paid for. You can also do it on your own creature. So let's say you had Toll Dragon from the last one, and then you had Nun Slap. Uh, you ignore the ability, and so they have to take the six damage for a four cost. And so this, I think, is a good powerful one. You can, it can either work defensively or offensively. And then for one, Good Samaritan, when this is squished, each hero gains two gold so for and i really like this one because it is a one for a three toughness um and so you'll want to throw this out a lot because you want the benefit of the gold and almost your opponent does too so you can easily just throw this in front of a lot of buses and it may get make it squish and if it's not then you just block some damage so which is very nice let's look at those 
All right, then we'll look at the neutral common. So neutral has mostly, has only creatures, loot, um, and armor. They have no mischiefs. So we're going to be looking at a lot of creatures here and a lot of uh, armors and loot and also some uh, trinkets. So first off, the RNG Jesus, I just think is one of the more most powerful ones. Um, roll the die, X is equal to the amount shown on the die. You're, it's high risk, high reward, but you could be paying uh, three for six damage going across or three for one. So it's a very unpredictable card, but having this out um, is going to guarantee at least some sort of damage coming across. It's not zero damage, it's at least one damage coming across. Um, a zero cost used card dealer for a zero tough one for a one tough zero power creature. If you overpaid for this, you may move one card from your discard pile to your hand. So that's a very powerful effect, um, especially for a common um, that if you overpay for this, which you only have to pay one to overpay for it, you get to bring something back from your discard pile to your hand, and you can play that as a monster because this is going to be during your attack phase. Um, and then the gazebo, if your defender has a location in play, this gains one power. And more than likely, your opponent's going to have a location because locations do give them benefits as well as giving you benefits. Um, and even if it doesn't, it is a you are paying two for a two power three toughness creature, and which is just a good exchange anyways. All right, and the neutral uncommons. So we have Liar's Dice, which is for zero... You get to uh, use this when a hero has rolled the die. Zap it, that hero must ignore the die result and re-roll. Use this as an interrupt. So you can use this on your own turn. If you're rolling a die and you hit a number you don't like, so let's say we had RNG Jesus, you roll a one, you can zap this and re-roll that die. And what's really nice about this, it's a zero um, cost. So if you draft multiples of these, uh, and you can have up to three in your deck, you can put, lay down all three of them and use it multiple times, either on yourself or use like once on yourself and once on an opponent. So it's just a good flexible trinket card. Um, the next one for our comment is Relentless Slobber Beast. Um, for one cost, if for a zero power one toughness, move all committed allies to their owner's hands. So um, if you, so just a good flexible card, um, you, if they have a lot of allies out, you can very easily block, if it will more than likely get squished because it's their one, but their allies that are committed to that do get tossed back to their hand, which then they have to repay gold to put them back out on their next turn instead of committing more monsters onto the battlefield, which any type of tempo play like that is going to be advantageous in your favor. Uh, and then the last uncommon for neutral is the Hip Star, uh, which is a two for a three power, two toughness. Name a card until your opponent's cooldown. Cards with that name cannot be played, which is a very interesting um, idea. So you're going to be using this card mostly like mid to late game where you're seeing what are their main highlight cards. More than likely in a limited format, they're only going to have one, possibly two of those cards. And so it'll even be more prevalent in their stack where you could just look in their stack and name something in their stack and just say, you cannot play that card next turn. So, and even just paying two for a three power, two toughness is a really good exchange. So, all right. So good luck drafting, and I hope this helps you out. Um, let me know if you have any other thoughts. What are some other good commons and uncommons in each of these classes that you think are really good to keep an eye out for? Um, please also ask me in the comments below if you have any questions. So thank you very much, and have fun drafting.